everyone, Reefer Gill here. Today we'll start breaking down my 75 gallon reef system that I've been running for nearly five years. Some of the steps I took to pre-plan for this teardown included talking to some fellow reefers, including 915 Mang, who has lots of experience tearing down systems. If you're not subscribed to him, I encourage you to check out his channel. His link will be down below in the description. I drove to my local Home Depot and picked up some essential items for the breakdown of the system. This included three 50 gallon brew containers on wheels and two large plastic tubs. All of my animals and rock will be on basic life support for the next few days as I start plumbing, aquascaping, and preparing the new system. Over the course of the past five years, I've acquired quite the collection of heaters and pumps, which will prove to be extremely useful for this tank swap. In addition to the spare heaters and pumps, I'll also use the heaters and pumps that I'm currently using in the 75 gallon tank. The basic life support essentials will consist of a heater and a pump for oxygen exchange. Equally as important to keep alive will be the beneficial bacteria living within the live rock. In addition to the live rock, I also have a filter sponge that I've always had in the sump collecting beneficial bacteria in the event I ever needed to restart my quarantine tank for any reason. The sponge will be placed in with the fish along with some live rock. I'll also place some live rock in the tub containing the corals. I also place marine pure bio blocks in each tub for additional housing of beneficial bacteria. This will be done to reduce the chances of causing the water in the tubs to cycle. The rest of the rock will be put inside one of the 50 gallon containers along with some water, heater, and pumps. This should keep the beneficial bacteria alive long enough for the tank swap to take place. My plan is to first attack the sump area by taking that offline. I'll pump out the water in the sump and put it into 5 gallon buckets so I can reuse the water later for the holding areas. I'll remove the chato and place that inside a 5 gallon bucket with a heater and a pump. Then I'll remove all the equipment in the sump and eventually remove the sump itself. We'll give the equipment and the sump a nice vinegar bath to make it all new again for the new system. I'll make sure to remove all the water from the overflow and properly drain it out and remove any plumbing that might get in my way. Next, I'll pump out about half the water in the display tank and place that into 5 gallon jugs to reuse later in the temporary holding areas. Once the water is removed, I'll do my best to carefully remove the corals from the rock. Once the corals are removed, I'll start to carefully remove the rocks. I don't remember if I used any epoxy to hold the rocks in place, so I don't want any of them to accidentally roll down and crack my tank. I place the majority of the rock inside a 50 gallon brew container ensuring I don't overfill it to the point where I can't move the container downstairs where I'll be temporarily storing my rock. Once all the rock and animals are removed, I'll pump out the remaining water from the display tank. Depending on how clear the remaining water is will determine if I reuse the last of the display water. From there, I'll remove and dispose of the sand. Remember, this sand is five years old is not really suitable to be reused. Yes, there's definitely some beneficial bacteria living within the sand, but if I properly care for the live rock during the swap process, the new sand in the new system will quickly populate with beneficial bacteria without adding any of the detritus or other potentially harmful pollutants in the old sand. It's just not worth risking reusing the old sand, and honestly, why would I want to? I'm starting with a new build with fresh live sand. Now, if I was starting a new system with dry rock, a couple of scoops of the sand might help accelerate the population of beneficial bacteria. The entire project took me about six hours to do and it would have taken me longer if it wasn't for my neighbor coming over and inviting me for a sushi dinner. Instead, we spent the next two hours breaking down the tank and eventually carrying out the stand and the tank. A big thank you to Peyton for his help. If you're like me, you'll probably have used tons of zip ties for wire management. Having scissors or cutters nearby will be helpful for this project. I found that this project got messy and disorganized really fast. I found myself tripping over expensive equipment I had removed and laid out in my work area. I'd suggest having a designated area for the equipment you're removing from the sump area in an area that won't interfere with your movements. These suction cup handles proved to be invaluable in carrying out the tank. They're made for sheets of glass, but they're also popular in the hobby. I picked these up for about $14 each on Amazon. Although the amount of times that you'll actually use these will be limited, they're nice to have and can be used to help out a buddy move their tank in the future. In an ideal situation, you'll already have a system running to add your livestock into. Unfortunately, I had to move my 75 gallon tank before I could even bring up the new tank since the 75 gallon system was sitting in the exact same spot where my new tank would be going. So if you're in a similar situation, be sure to grab yourself something to temporarily house your animals. These tubs worked out okay for my use. 
One thing I did not account for was the amount of pressure placed on the sides of the bins that caused them to bow out. They seemed to be pretty heavy duty, but there were no match for the water placed inside of them. Between my wife and me, we came up with a fix. We used ratcheting straps and placed pieces of wood on each side of the tub. This seemed to provide enough support to keep the sides from bowing out. If possible, remove some water to relieve the amount of force being placed on the sides of the tub. I made sure to recycle the water that was in the 75 gallon system and place that water into the temporary holding areas. This would ensure that the water parameters and temperatures were the same as the water the livestock came from. Since I didn't know how long it was going to take me to finish the next build, I marked the water line in the tubs with tape to indicate the evaporation level and allow me to know how much RODI water to replace it with. I used two of the 350 gallon containers to hold additional freshly mixed salt water. I made sure to first give the containers a good rinse and remove any dirt or residue. With the additional water in the 50 gallon containers and the water in the existing water making station, I should have enough water to fill up the new aquarium. Toward the end of the project, I started getting complacent, tired, and just careless. I was seeing a whole lot of open water in the tubs and in the containers. There were power strips vicariously laying on the surfaces right above the water. Live power strips were everywhere right next to open sources of water. On one occasion, a live power strip fell and nearly went into one of the tubs. That's what it took for me to wake up and make some safety changes. I've never used a chisel and a hammer to remove colonies of coral off of a rock, but it actually worked out pretty good. I didn't break up the colonies as bad as I originally had thought. This was my first experience breaking down a system of this size. For the most part, I went at it alone. I can't say I enjoyed the experience one single bit, so kudos to you guys who have done this multiple times. It's something that I don't want to do for a very, very long time. Although I'm sad to see this 5-year-old 75-gallon system go, I'm very excited to start the next build. It's been a couple of nights and there has been no aquarium equipment running upstairs, so it's been super silent. I gotta hurry up and get busy with this next build to break that silence. If you guys haven't already subscribed, hit that subscription button. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Also follow me on Instagram and we'll see you guys next Sunday. Thanks for watching.